Once something blows up and goes viral and gets a lot of traction, it literally gets ruined. And her main thing on her channel is that beauty is attainable if you can pay for it. Like basically saying, you're not ugly, you're just poor. Men and their podcasts are slowly ruining the internet. Nobody wants to hear your misogynistic, colorist, fake alpha male opinion. If you've done something that is worthy of you being canceled or is worthy of you having your platform taken away or is worthy of you getting bullied off the internet or whatever the case may be, then I think it should be that. A lot of things are just going to be whitewashed, AKA watered down in order to be more suitable and more fit for a wider white audience. Hey guys, what is up? It is Cam. Welcome, welcome back to my channel. All right, so in today's video, we are going to be doing a little bit of unpopular opinions because I just feel like I have not done unpopular opinions in a very, very long time. And I have a few things that I would just like to, you know, talk about, open up a conversation about, figure out what you guys think about these opinions that I have that I would consider to be maybe a little bit unpopular. And before we get into it, make sure you go ahead and comment down below some unpopular opinions that you might have. Give this video a big thumbs up. Also, subscribe to my channel, click the notification bell so you never miss another one of my uploads. You can also subscribe to my second channel that will be on the screen link down below. And you can also follow me on all of my social media outside of YouTube. YouTube, my spam account, my TikTok, and my Instagram. My Instagram, my spam account, and my TikTok. I don't know. So yeah, without further ado, <laughs> let's get into it. All right, so my first unpopular opinion is about the hit HBO show, Euphoria. Now, I think Euphoria is bad, and I'm gonna tell you why it's bad. It's not because of the cinematography, it's not because of the film, it's not because of the content, or whatever the case may be. Maybe it is a little bit about the content, but the reason that I think Euphoria is bad is because of the fact that it oversaturated is teenagers. Like, I don't care how good the cinematography is, the film, like the shots, whatever that kind of stuff is, the soundtrack. The bottom line is the fact that y'all are watching people that are supposed to be 16, 17 years old doing the do and doing things that are technically considered to be very illegal. And it's kind of like a glamorization and a glorification of things that we really probably should not be either doing or promoting. And even though I cannot sit up here and say that people do not live real lives like the ones shown in Euphoria, I don't necessarily think that it's okay to push the real lives. Of course, you can tell the story, but I don't think you necessarily have to tell the story in as graphic of a manner as Euphoria does. So my next unpopular opinion is the fact that the trend of moving to NYC is going to ruin New York City just like it did LA. And the reason why I feel that way is because there was a point in time long, long ago where moving to Los Angeles, California was all the rage. Literally every YouTuber was doing it, whether you were in lifestyle, whether you were in comedy, whether you were in whatever niche that you were in on YouTube or on any social media platform, it was the popular thing. It was the move to go to LA once you got big enough and once you felt like you had enough money and enough followers and now that place has changed to being in New York City and now New York City while it is just as expensive if not more expensive than LA not only are the prices going to go up in order to live there but it's going to become oversaturated just like LA has become and then eventually people are going to think that it's no longer cool to be there and y'all are just going to pick another place but I think at some point NYC or the appeal of going to NYC and living in NYC is going to phase out and is going to be ruined just like LA was. Mainstream music has just gotten worse and worse, I fear. Like at some point, I no longer want to hear about sex, money, murder, and drugs. Like keep the trauma to yourself, keep your cooter cat to yourself. Nobody wants to hear that after a certain point. Like I just feel like we're talking about the same thing over and over again. Like nobody cares how much money you have. Nobody cares how much sex you're having. Nobody cares who you killed and who killed who and whatever the case may be. Nobody cares what drugs you're doing. And I think in the same way that Euphoria does, but in a different sense, it glamorizes and glorifies this type of lifestyle, which I really don't feel like we should necessarily be promoting, especially when these people have such a strong influence over the younger generation and the younger people that are growing up. Like we're gonna sit up here and expect girls to not act this way and expect guys to not act this way. And we're wondering why we consider men not to be ish and women not to be ish. But think about this type of music and stuff that we're listening to and the entertainment that we're consuming and the things that we're promoting. There's a reason why. I really do think that gatekeeping is only unacceptable in some instances. Like I feel like if a group of people is being demonized for something that they really cannot control, like AAVE, especially if they've grown up in a place where AAVE is very, very prominent, the way that they talk, the way that they act, the way that they dress. If people are being demonized for something that they can't control, yet another group of people are being praised for that exact same thing, I think that is wrong. And I think in that instance, gatekeeping is completely acceptable. Because I don't think other groups of people should be praised for carrying out the same exact behavior that other people are put down for. And also another thing, I'm tired of people saying that black women cannot be upset when non-black women wear culturally black hairstyles. Like it's not whitewashing 
our entire culture. And I think because of the fact that social media is very popular and all of the cultures are kind of starting to mingle and people are starting to take things from here and take things from there and put it together, I think at some point, a lot of things are just going to be whitewashed, AKA watered down in order to be more suitable and more fit for a wider white audience. But then at a certain point, it no longer has strong roots in its original culture. So I do think while people should be able to enjoy things from other cultures and we shouldn't gatekeep stupid things like favorite books and favorite artists and favorite bands, favorite perfumes and all that kind of stuff, we shouldn't be gatekeeping that stuff like that. But I think when you're talking about things that are cultural, we should really be looking at the intent behind wanting to participate in the culture and if you're even educated enough to be participating in something that you may not even know anything about. Okay, okay, okay. Even though I think that black fishing and Asian fishing are equally unacceptable and equally bad, I do feel like in the case of black fishing, that is something that does propel the girls a lot farther. I think it's because blackness is more of a commodity and because it is so sought after and because it is so popular right now, a lot of the times we want the things that are associated with it and the best way to do that is put on a mask and put on a front and put on a costume of blackness in order to get what you need to get. And the main reason why I brought this up is because I know a lot of people were talking about Ariana Grande. Of course, I feel like she had a borderline black fishing era, but also once that was over, I feel like she kind of started doing the Asian fishing thing. And I know a couple of YouTubers have brought this up and a couple of commentary YouTubers have talked about this a little bit just because it was something that became very noticeable. But I could not help to think about the difference between black fishing and Asian fishing, being that because of all the things that are attached to blackness and black culture, it really does push the girls a lot farther. So I think that all social media is actually morphing into the same platform. Like I feel like because of the fact that all of the social media platforms have the exact same features or very, very similar features, it's really, really hard to keep individuality and creativity and having unique content because of the fact that a lot of people are just copy and pasting and copy and pasting from app to app to app. And I'm also guilty of this, but that's just because you're supposed to be diversifying as somebody that's trying to be a content creator and influencer, whatever the case may be. But I think if social media platforms were to promote more of a diversification between the type of content that you do put out there, it would be a lot easier to make things unique and creative and individual. I think that cancel culture was ruined by the, all the people who were trying to cancel people for really dumb stuff. Like I feel like cancel culture really had a place in our generation and probably could have cemented its place in our generation as a way to hold people accountable. But I think that once people started canceling others for really stupid stuff, like really dumb stuff, I think that's where it lost all of its credibility and where it lost all of its actual weight. And I think people have become very, very sensitive to cancel culture. And a lot of people think that others have, should have redemption arcs and things like that, which I don't necessarily think that people shouldn't. However, comma, if you've done something that is worthy of you being canceled or is worthy of you having your platform taken away or is worthy of you getting bullied off the internet or whatever the case may be, then I think it should be that. But if not, then why are we dwelling on something that is not worth our time talking about, thinking about, entertaining? You're just giving people publicity for no reason. Because I do think in some instances, cancel culture can be useful, but at this point, it's really kind of just dead. I think the that girl trend only works for skinny white girls because I feel like that's the only type of content that is pushed when it comes to being that girl. You just see a bunch of white girls and usually they're skinny and usually they have these very unrealistic morning routines and usually they have these very unrealistic productivity levels and things like that. And of course you have to remember that people only show you a snippet of their life. And a lot of times think about it, when people decide to record these that girl routines, they plan it ahead to make sure they're on top of their stuff so that they can get the best shots and the best content possible in order to portray to you guys this fake life that they're living. But I do think when it comes to being that girl, not a lot of black girls are pushed, not a lot of non-white girls are pushed. And I think the reason why is because it's something that is very privileged kind of. Like, even though I think that anyone can be that girl, I think there's only one way to be that girl that is currently being pushed. And I don't necessarily think that should be so. Men and their podcasts are slowly ruining the internet. <laughs> Nobody wants to hear your misogynistic, colorist, fake alpha male opinions. It's not cute and it doesn't give off how I value man. Now, one thing that I do eventually want to talk about on my channel is the rise of the male podcast and that whole thing, like with the red pill community and toxic masculinity and all of that different type of stuff. But I just really wanted to address because I know recently there was a lot of like rise around the fact that men have these podcasts. And while I do think that it can be productive in some instances, I know that there are a lot of times where men are just dogging out women, dragging women, especially when it comes to black women, and just being very rude and disrespectful and trying to hide under the guise that they are trying to become high value men and trying to make sure that the women that they are picking are lining up with the type of lifestyle that they're trying to live. And I think a lot of it is just hiding behind a toxic masculinity, hiding behind misogyny, hiding behind colorism, hiding behind being an alpha male. Really, it's not alpha male. It's you just showing off all your insecurities. Okay, so let's talk about Doja Cat and Lori Hill very, very quickly because this is something that popped off over the week and I was so sad that I could not talk about it at the time. But we're gonna talk about it right now because I think with that whole situation, my first opinion is that two wrongs do not make a right. Just because Doja Cat may have felt wronged by Lori making a video about her alleged plastic surgery procedures does not mean 
mean that Doja Cat should have gone off on her the way that she went off on her. I think a lot of women hide behind the guys that they are for all women, but when it comes to another woman attacking another woman, like all bets are off the table at that point, which I don't think is nice. And especially not because of the fact that Lori Hill, I actually really like her content. I think what she's doing is very, very good, especially when you consider breaking down the fact that a lot of influences and celebrities are not natural and do not have natural faces and do not have natural bodies. And her main thing on her channel is that beauty is attainable if you can pay for it. Like basically saying, you're not ugly, you're just poor. And I think when she makes videos like that, it can be very, very eye-opening and very validating for girls who are down on themselves because they may not look like X celebrity or Y celebrity when really it's like you don't look like them because you haven't paid to get your face done or your body done. But I think in the case of Doja Cat, getting up on the internet and dragging the crap out of Lori Hill, even though I can understand her hurt because she has been under a lot of scrutiny because of the fact that she has lost a lot of weight, I think there was a classier way to go about responding to it, especially if that kind of stuff is beneath you. Like, of course, address it, yes. Especially if it's something that's not true and people are spreading lies about you, yes, address it. But I think it spreads the wrong message. I don't want to be insensitive to Doja Cat's feelings about the content that was made about her. However, when you look at it from a full perspective, I think it's just very, very interesting the way in which Doja Cat reacted. It almost makes me feel as if there is something that has been done that she does not want to address or she does not want to come out to the light. Otherwise, she could have just been like, Lori is cap and moved on with her life and didn't even go as hard as she went. But I do kind of think that it calls into the question the fact that I think influencers and celebrities should be more honest about things like that or else it would not be so taboo. It would not be so taboo for someone to say, oh, this person has had this, this, and that if the celebrity was honest. But the thing about celebrities and influencers is that they don't want you to know that they have had XY procedure because it takes down the whole facade. It takes down the whole image that their body is natural or that their face is natural and that they just woke up like this and that they're born like this when really they're not. So I think not only was it very triggering for Doja Cat, but I think it was just a hot mess. <laughs> All right, my next unpopular opinion is about the claw clip. I don't know if you guys know what I'm talking about, but for the girls that get it, y'all get it. The claw clip, that junk was so cute at first. I remember when I first started seeing it everywhere, I was like, wow, it is so cute. And then just as TikTok does, it ruined it because TikTok ruins everything. The claw clip was extremely cute. It was extremely unique. And then everyone started to do it and it no longer became extremely cute or extremely unique. It just basically kind of got ruined because now everybody and their mother wants to wear a claw clip and there's nothing special about it anymore. Like it's very unoriginal now that everybody has kind of hopped on the trend. I feel like that's a lot of what happens with TikTok and the fact that things can go so viral so quickly on that app. Once something blows up and goes viral and gets a lot of traction, it literally gets ruined. And this happens a lot with like consumable products as well. Like I know if something goes viral on TikTok, I better not expect to be able to find it in the store for months and months and months because y'all be up in there buying that junk. Like leave some for the girls. But no, as soon as TikTok puts y'all on game to something, it's like everybody and their mother has to run and go get it. And there's nothing left for regular people like me who just want to try stuff and live their life. Like come on. But yeah, I think it's kind of the same thing with the claw clip. I'm not saying that it's not cute anymore, but I'm just saying that it's no longer kind of unique and original. It's more so like what I was talking about with NYC where it's oversaturated and because everyone is doing it, for me personally, it's kind of lost that very high appeal. Hey, 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 hey. I think that mainstream music and entertainment is one of the reasons why society is so obsessed with women's bodies. Don't shoot me, I am just the messenger. Because I'm not saying that society has not always been obsessed with women's bodies, which I feel like it definitely has in some way, shape or another, but I think the hyper- sexualization that we are promoting and putting out and that a lot of women artists are promoting and putting out is part of the reason why society is obsessed with our bodies. And I'm not trying to blame the victim, obviously, but I do just want to say that it's getting out of hand on both ends. I don't think women talking about their bodies is necessarily reason for people to sexualize them, but if women are going to talk about their bodies in a sexual way, then I don't think you can help people sexualizing them. So I think on both ends, it's not good. And the reason why is because mainstream music is favoring the fact that sex always sells. And even though it has always been like that, I think it is now more heightened and it continues to get more and more and more prevalent as we go out through the year. All right, y'all. So that is the end of this video. Let me know in the comments down below if you have any other unpopular opinions that you would like to add to mine, or if you want to respond to any of my unpopular opinions and open up your own conversation. You guys know that's my favorite thing to do is open up conversation 
and kind of talk about it with you guys down in the comments below. So feel free to do that. Also, make sure if you haven't already that you give this video a thumbs up. And if you like this video and you want to see more content like this from me, go ahead and subscribe to my channel and click the notification bell so you never miss another one of my uploads. You can also subscribe to my second channel. That is where I post all my natural hair, girl talk, lifestyle vlogs type of content. And if you want to keep up with me outside of YouTube, you can follow me on all my social media, my Instagram, my Instagram account, and my TikTok. And yeah, that is it, you guys. Thank you, thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. Don't forget to be the light and I will see you in my next one. Bye!